Hi, this is Mr. West, and I'm doing a Khan Academy tutorial on special requests today. This one is Relate Ratios in Right Triangles, and this was requested by Isaiah Lawrence. Thank you, Isaiah, for this suggestion, and I hope this video helps you out. Again, if you have your own request, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll help you with whatever content that you need. This particular Khan Academy is asking about trig identities and basically the, the principles of it. So if we're considering right triangle, JKL below, which expressions are equivalent to sine of k, okay? So a couple things we need to know here. One, we need to know the trig identity. So I have them up here. You got to have these memorized. Sokotoa is a way to memorize it, but you got to know that sine is opposite over, over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and so on, okay? So sine of k, the first thing you always want to do, step one, is identify where your reference angle is. So k is here. We're looking at that angle, okay? So what is equivalent to the sine of K? Well, if we're talking about the sine of K, then we wanna know the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And I'm sorry, this is a little messy. Let me straighten that up. Okay, so here's our reference angle, okay? And we wanna know where the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that's essentially JL, whoops, over our hypotenuse, which is KL. That's equal to the sine of K, or angle K, I should say. So sine of angle K is equal to JC, JL, my goodness, my L's and C's, there's no C's on here, over KL. So that's the sine of K. Now we need to choose two answers that are equivalent to that. So here's our possibilities. We have length of side adjacent to K over length of the hypotenuse. Well, the side, let me move this up. The side adjacent to K, almost there, looks like I got it. The side adjacent to K is going to be, let me highlight it, this side over the hypotenuse. That is incorrect. This one is talking about the cosine of K. Okay, so we're not interested in that one. Length of side opposite to L over the length of the hypotenuse. Well, side opposite to L is the same thing as this side right here. So opposite L is the same thing as that adjacent side. This is the adjacent side to our reference angle. So that's our reference angle K, and that's the adjacent side. We're not interested in that because that is the cosine. So again, we, we don't want that. So let's go back here. All right, and let's take a look. That one's no good. Okay, and even though this gets moved, we said A was out, this one's out. Let me erase this one. Now we're talking about cosine of angle L. Okay, so cosine of angle L, we're trying to see if that's equal to the sine of this angle. So here's our reference angle, L, and if you're labeled the sides again, as soon as the reference angle changes, that means the opposite and the adjacent side change from what they were before, okay? So this opposite in green there represents that reference angle K, but if it changes to L, that means your opposite side also changes. That's opposite and then this is adjacent. So the adjacent side for L is the opposite side for K. It's a little confusing, but as soon as the angle changes, the reference angle, everything else changes. So if we want to equal to cosine of L, cosine of L is equal to adjacent over a hypotenuse. And this adjacent side is the same as that opposite, opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it's actually going to be the same. Let me just kind of clear that up. So cosine of L is equal to my adjacent side, which is JL, over my hypotenuse, KL. So it's the same as the sine of K, okay? So that is one of our choices. And then JL over KL, what I say? Uh, JL over KL. So this one uh, just shows us what that ratio is, and that's what we said right from the beginning. So there we go, there's our two choices. All right, moving on. Uh, which, express, uh, which expressions represent the length of side KL? So which of these represent the length? All right, so here's, let's f identify this side first. And this is the hypotenuse actually. So let's go ahead and label it. That's the hypotenuse, it's the longest side. Which expressions represent the length of that side? So this is a tough problem because we need to know how to uh, use sine and cosine and tangent in order to find lengths of sides. So, it gives us in relation to 60 degrees, and then essentially this is talking about, uh, so there's 60 degrees, and then these essentially are talking about 30 degrees. 90 minus 60 is 30. Okay, so let me go ahead and highlight those. So 30 or 60 degree reference angle is here. Okay, I'm gonna change this so it's not a highlighter. I'm gonna change it to this. And then our 30 degree reference angle is actually gonna be here. 
Okay, so K is our 30 degree. I'm gonna write that in here. These are pretty involved problems. Now I understand why this was requested. Okay, so we have our hypotenuse, we have 60 degrees, and we have 30 degrees. Let's first uh, make a little ratio here expressing the length of this hypotenuse. And how do we do that? Well, we know that the sine, let's just start with L. The sine of this angle L is the same thing as our opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay, that's our sine identity. Well, let's swap out what we know to be our opposite side. So for this, this is our opposite side with our green reference angle. So our opposite side is actually 5.2. Okay, and our hypotenuse, that's unknown. So I'm gonna leave it just as hypotenuse, okay? We don't know what it is, so I'm just gonna leave it. We could call it X. That's probably my student's favorite thing to do. We can call the hypotenuse X. So because we don't know it, we're gonna call it X. And we know that sine of L is actually sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so how would we solve for sine of X? Or sorry, for the angle, not for the angle, for the side of X, not sine, for the side of X because this represents the length of the hypotenuse, okay? So how would we do that? I always recommend putting this over one and then cross multiplying to solve for x. So then we have sine of 60 times our missing side, x, that's our hypotenuse, equals 5.2. So then I need to divide by, let me change this 5.2 to red, there we go. I need to divide by sine of 60 to solve. So we're going to see if 5.2 divided by sine of 60 is one of those options because that's how we can find this. And just for out of curiosity, uh, I want to see what that equals. So 5.2 divided by, I'm just typing this right on my uh, graphing calculator, 60, make sure you're in degree mode. And I got 6.004. So it's about six. Okay. So there X equals about six. And what you could do is you could first solve it like that and then check all the answers and put them on your calculator and see which ones equal six. That's a way to do it. Okay. So I'm going to go over here and I'm looking for 5.2 divided by sine of 60. And it looks like there's my guy. Now, just by the properties of understanding the expressions and what's equivalent, we know A is not a choice because we have 5.2 divided by sine of 60. It can't be also three divided by sine of 60. That doesn't make any sense. Now, we need to talk about our 30 degree reference angle. Okay, so the, the C and D both have the sine of that 30 degree reference angle. So let's go ahead and figure out how would we solve it using that reference angle. So I'm gonna erase this opposite side. Okay, I'm actually gonna erase this too just so you can see the different colors. Okay, so now what's my hypotenuse? My hypotenuse always stays the same. It's always this longest side, but my opposite side changes to this opposite, and then this would be my adjacent side. I don't really need that adjacent side because I'm just worried about sine. So my sine of K is equal to my opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, that's the trig identity. That K looks weird. Okay, there we go. I know it's sine of 30 that we're talking about. K equals 30 degrees. I know my opposite side is three, but I don't know my, I know it now, but I don't know my hypotenuse. So I can call that X. So what do I do? I put this over one and I cross multiply. So now I have sine of 30 times X, and I'm gonna put it in yellow this time, times X equals three. I'm gonna divide by sine of 30 to both sides. Okay, so here we go. And now I wanna see X equals three divided by sine of 30. You know what? If you type this on a calculator, you get the same thing. You also get six. So that's the cool thing. You could just type those into the multiple choice. But again, I can just look for that answer. Boom, there it is. 90 minus 60 is 30. Those are my two choices. And there I go. Okay. Okay, Whew. here we go. Another doozy. Uh, Malia tried to prove that cosine equals sine of 90 minus uh, theta using the following diagram. Her proof is not correct. Okay, so measure of angle C equals 90 minus theta. Okay, that part is correct. Okay, because if you have, again, if this was 90 degrees, all the angles need to add up to 180. So we already have 90 accounted for here. So if we do 90 minus this, that's gonna tell us that missing angle right there. So that's that step is correct. The Q angles in a right triangle are complementary. Okay, that's true. Complementary means adds up to 90. Second step, 90 minus theta, sine of 90 minus theta equals AC over BC. This is where we can check our trig identity. So 90 minus theta, we're given theta. So that represents, right here, represents that. Because there's our green theta there. 
that represents that angle. And then we have our 90, of course, that's represented, I'll make it in red right here. So this sine of yellow, we need to draw all our reference uh, sides from that reference angle. So we have opposite here, the hypotenuse is always the longest side, opposite 90, and this is our adjacent side. So we need to see if it's equal to AC over BC. Our opposite side, sine of C, that's essentially what we have here, sine of 90 minus theta, AC over BC. It's not. That's wrong. It should be AB over BC. So that's incorrect. That's cosine. So we know step two is wrong. What is the first mistake in Malia's proof? Um, measures AB, adapted, not, okay, A is wrong. Use the wrong sides in her ratio for sign of this. That's it. Okay, that's essentially saying step two was incorrect because she used the wrong sides. And there we go. And our final question, thank goodness. Consider right triangle M and O below. All right, what expressions are equivalent to cosine of M? Now we're pros at this, we know what to do. We're gonna first find our reference angle, M, okay? Next, we're gonna label the sides in regard to M. We have opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, okay? It's always the longest side, hypotenuse. Which are equivalent to cosine? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse cosine of theta. This time we have cosine of M and that's going to be equal to adjacent side is MO and our hypotenuse is MN. So we're just looking for which one of these is are also equal to MO over MN. There's the first one, MO over MN. It can't be D, that's wrong. And I guarantee it's not going to be C also just because tangent means opposite over adjacent. Okay, and you can't get the hypotenuse with opposite or adjacent side, so it's not going to be tangent. And then length of side opposite to N, okay, length of side opposite to N, that's the side we want because we want an adjacent side to angle M. Over the hypotenuse, it's this one, okay? And if you want to slow it down and look at it based on this, opposite side to N is this adjacent side we originally were talking about, MO. That would be MO over the hypotenuse, which is MN, so that matches up. And just to show you, tangent of angle N, that would be MO tangent of angle N would be equal to MO over ON. So that's wrong too. Okay, so we have our two answers, A and B. Let's check it. And we got it. Okay, so that was a long one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you need any help, make sure to leave a comment and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.